Hey friends, Amanda here, Bare Bones Living. Welcome back. And the last you guys saw, Mike was in the process of building us a hoop coop, which is different from the Siskovich tractors that we currently have. And that was to give us a new pen that we could separate out our... All right, so it's apparently too windy for my tripod, so... <laughs> So I will just narrate instead. And so we built a hoop coop instead of our existing Siskovich tractors just to save money, save time, and possibly use this as a greenhouse when we're not using it for chickens. But our purpose for having a third chicken flock on our property was we wanted to be able to um, separate out and breed different flocks. And so this flock is going to be our future next year's egg layers. So we have our barred rooster here and he has eight ladies in there with him. He's got um, he's got four barred ladies. We have the three the three one-year-old bards and then my OG Esmeralda right there. She's the one that just came running up. That's Esmeralda. She's a five-year-old chicken and she is still laying eggs uh, and she's super sweet. She is my original chicken and then we also moved into this flock the Olga, our black Australorp. We have one black Australorp so we moved her in here as well as our Rhode Island Reds. We have two Rhode Island Reds that we got with these younger bards. Oh, you can see one back there. So we have two Rhode Island Reds. One, we put one buff in there um, in case we needed someone to go broody and be a mama. And those are going to be our future egg layers. Um, Obviously, the bards are going to be purebred, and we are going to try a cross with the Rhode Islands and the bard, and the Australorp and the bard. And then, obviously, we might get a, a mix of a buff and a bard, but all of those birds. We are happy to have a mix of because we like their egg production, their mothering instincts, and we like, we like the birds. So we were okay with having those mixes and those attributes. Those are all dual purpose birds and that's what we're trialing currently. I did want to give you guys an overview of this coop that Mike built. He used one full length of cattle panel. So that's a 16 foot cattle panel that he bent over. And then he did like a Siskovich type bottom to it with the wheels. We got the same wheels. He used chicken wire to frame it all in, and then we put a tarp, this tarp over it to block them from any severe weather and give them some shade. He has two roost bars in there, as you will see, nest box. I just put in, I don't know if you can see that, can you? 
yeah, that little green feeder right there next to the Rhode Island Red. That is an omelet feeder that I have oyster shells and the NutriBalance that I got from Azure that I just installed today. So they have free choice NutriBalance and free choice oyster shells. And then on this side, he framed out a door, put chicken or a hardware cloth on the door, and then chicken wire over here. I think we just had some extra. I'm not really sure why he did the hardwire cloth here, but it works, right? Yes, yes. But yeah, nice and roomy. And like I said, when we're not using um, this as a chicken coop, I could use it as a greenhouse to protect some plants, maybe in the early spring or the fall. And this could possibly be dual purpose. But he also you know, cut like skis on them so that they glide easy, easier across the ground. And then he attached these eye hooks or rings or I don't, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> so that with a rope so that we can pull it. And then I made another five gallon nipple water just this morning that they desperately needed because they were going through the little water pretty fast and knocking it over. So they are set in that respect. We do not have an omelet door for them so the door is staying just staying open. I mean they are behind this electric fence so we're not that concerned about it and we discussed it and decided we did not need to invest in another omelet door at this time so as i mentioned we have the bards the rhode islands the australorp and the bus in here all brown egg layers however we have an imposter amongst us. And I don't know who it is, but one of these girls is not who, she, who she says she is. And somebody here is giving us a beautiful olive egg. And I know it's not these two. That's Olga. And that's Esmeralda. I know it's not them. It's one of these new girls. And I don't know who it is. And I don't know that I'll ever figure out who it is. Because they all look like what they're supposed to look like. But somebody here is giving me a beautiful olive egg. And I don't know how I how I would figure out who it is unless I put one of them back with one of them back at a time with my Bielefelders. But I really don't care all that much. I just think it's kind of funny. Put down in the comments if you have any guesses. I did see one of the new bards lay, and I know she gave me a brown egg. But I can't tell the difference between the bards anyway. So, unless I catch the one in the act that is giving me the olive egg, I'll never know. Have an idea when it comes if it if we hatch it I don't know 
It's weird. I have no guesses, and I have no, no, no way to figure out. And I am extremely excited about this flock. These are all of my Bielefelders. There are 10 girls. And our rooster, who I'm calling Bruce. And these are going to be our meat birds. They also give us lots of eggs, so. They're a nice dual purpose bird. And just look at the size of them. These girls are bigger than my roosters, or as big as my roosters. They're huge birds. They do seem to take or need a little bit more feed than a traditional bird. And I equate that to their girth. Um, but we are very happy with them so far. We hear that they drop off with their egg production at a year and a half. And they are almost a year, but they didn't start really producing eggs until um, pretty much until winter they started really producing. Uh, so I think we're going to get a good two years of production. But I heard some people say that they had a had an extreme drop in eggs. Um, so our plan is after we incubate our turkey eggs, we're gonna do some Bielefelder eggs. <laughs> oh man, I thought we were gonna catch a a mid-flight snack there on film. That would have been cool. Um, we will incubate some Bielefelder eggs and then that'll be our meat and when these girls stop producing eggs we will eat them and raise their young for the next round. So this is an exciting flock for me and our food production moving forward. And then this flock has everybody else. <laughs> ah, the, this is what we call the big girls flock. And this is where all of my OG chickens live. These are my four and five year old girls flock. So over there you'll see there's Blanche and Ollie and then oh I see Ruby is inside she's on the ground inside the coop. Um, so I did take out Esmeralda and Olga and then oh yeah Coco's over here. And those are, the ones that have names are my OG four and five year old girls that are basically our pet chickens and get to live out their lives here on our farm. We will never process them. They will just die of old age. Um, and then we still have our well summers in here, which we do not like that breed at all. We hated the rooster. He was mean as heck and we butchered him. Um, and then the females, I also don't like at all. They are aggressive and towards, towards us and towards their sisters. 
Um, we just don't like them at all. <laughs> but we have both. This is, this is Rick here. And he's the, he's our, he's our big boy. He's our oldest rooster. And he came with the Well Summers and the Buffs and the Red Stars and they're two years old, almost. And these, these guinea, them too. But also in this flock we have who I call Junior because he is also a well summer rooster like Rick, but he is a year younger. And we moved him in here um, because we wanted to, we didn't want to breed him. We don't really want to breed any of these chickens. Um, we may decide to breed well summers at some point since we have the silvers and the blue lace red and both of our boys are the gold wine dots um, but that's not something that we care to do right now so everyone else got moved up here And Rick and Junior obviously had to duke it out a little bit, and Rick had to show him that he was the boss. But it was actually a, a fairly easy transition for everybody, and everyone seems to be getting along fine now. I still don't really care for my guineas because they're like mobsters in my opinion and they bully my chickens and they're noisy as heck. They also have not started to lay yet which is surprising to me since the turkeys are laying. I would think that the guineas would start to lay but we were thinking about trying to hatch some new guineas and getting rid of these guineas because these ones, like I said, are like thugs. And then trying to, and they identify because they were raised with these chickens, they identify them as their flock. And I don't think I can remove them because I think they'll just fly back in because they come and go as they please. But I was thinking if we got some eggs from the guineas, then we could raise them separately and maybe put them up in my orchard so that they can eat the bugs in the orchard and they won't identify with these chickens because they will gang up on Rick and I mean he's a tough bird but five against one and right now we have three boys um so the bo it's usually the mainly the boys that will gang up on him so three boys against one, he, he gets his tail feathers pulled out. Like this is the biggest his plume has been ever because he would get his tail feathers pulled out quite often. Um, so I really don't like that they beat up on him. But this is our chicken situation. Their poultry news, our turkeys are still laying eggs, which is great. And our littlest hen, Penny, the one on the far right, I've been calling her Penny because she's little and she's copper. <laughs> um, and I'm, I've been calling our, our Tom George because he reminds me of George of the Jungle when he puffs up like that. George pounding on his chest. Um, Penny, surprisingly, I think, our smallest hen 
is I believe one of our egg layers. I don't know that all three of them are laying because we only get about one a day. Um, and with three hens, I think if all three of them were laying, we would get more than that. There's been two or three times when we've had two eggs, but it's been, they've been laying for a little over three weeks and we just now have 22 eggs, which is the capacity of our incubator. And the reason I think that Penny is the one that is laying the eggs because she seems to be our only slightly broody hen. She's the only one that I see laying on the eggs. And she has been in there quite frequently laying on the eggs. She doesn't stay in there, as you can see, she's out here. Um, and because they, you know, we gave them this enclosure, which they are using to lay their eggs, which is awesome. And we had two very separate nests in there. Um, and Penny is usually in there. And then she comes out and doesn't stay in there. So we did take the eggs for the first 22 eggs. Um, and then now I stopped taking them. I didn't take yesterday and I didn't take today. Um, there was one egg in there yesterday and I haven't checked today. I'm hoping, so we have our brooder, or our brooder, our incubator full with 22 eggs, knowing that these are the first eggs that they've laid. They may not be fertilized since they are the first eggs that these girls are laying. I watched George attempt to mate one of the bigger girls and he just stood on her for a prolonged time but never like lowered himself onto her. He just stood on her. So Mike said he actually witnessed mating happening but I don't stand here and watch them very often so they're all still just getting into their maturity so the likelihood that any of those will give us babies is not high but we got to start somewhere so we are incubating 22 eggs and the rest of them I'm leaving in here and hoping that Penny will actually come back and sit on them and hatch some out herself. I'm hoping that leaving them there will, once there is a full clutch there, she will stay and actually become broody and raise her own babies, because that would be really awesome. Thank you guys for stopping by today and joining in on our journey here at Burbones Living. We'll catch you on the next one.